Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm really annoyed at myself. I filmed this video yesterday and it's supposed to be a Halloween video and I filmed it on a bike ride. I found this lovely spot, really quiet, but it was windy and unfortunately I'd forgotten the dead cat that you put on the camera. And so I had to write all of that footage off. So I'm a little bit annoyed. So instead, it's coming from my front room, as most of my videos are. These fragrances are what I consider to be mysterious, gothic, maybe even dark and dangerous. So yeah, Halloween fragrances, except now it's not Halloween anymore so I'm um, yeah a tiny bit annoyed at that. I'm going to start with a sample that I have and I really really like this one a lot. I uh, will be at some point I will be purchasing this fragrance from Juliet Rose Perfumes. It's called Black Rose Musk and it's an incensey spicy musky rose as you might expect, the rose in here is very prominent and comes off in some ways a little soapy, but in other ways quite dark and mysterious. But because it's because it's musky and incensey, it just gives you that mysterious feel. It lasts really well on the skin, it has beautiful development. And this will be the second fragrance I buy from this company. The first one I'm going to get will be I Dreamed of a Rose. I did an Instagram post about that. So if you're interested, check it out. Because honestly, it's a stunning, stunning rose perfume that I absolutely must have. But this one is my second favourite from the samples that I tested. Black Rose Musk. Now the next one let's go for, haven't mentioned this one in a while, haven't worn this one in a while actually, it's Dendera from Centauri Perfumes. So Centauri of course is Peter from Fragrance View, for those of you that are YouTube Fragcom regulars you'll know Peter, he is adorable. And Centauri's Dendera, Dendera is an ancient temple that was actually built upon another even more ancient temple and that's what inspired the fragrance creation for Peter who has explored lots of um, lots of the world and he wanted to create something based on ancient Egypt and he really does evoke it with Dendera. Honestly I'm gonna wear this soon. This is a really great cool weather fragrance as well. So Dendera has notes of nutmeg. It does have an oud in here but it doesn't go all skanky and barnyardy to me at all. I just get dry, dusty, musky, spiciness from it really. There is rose in here. I don't know if I really pick up on it Maybe, but it, it brings something without being blatantly rose. Probably that's what's happening. I know Peter did use, I think he said he used the maximum amount of rose you're allowed in this perfume, but I don't think you're allowed to use that much real rose. So this one's highly natural. I can't remember the, I, I couldn't tell you how much, but there's a lot of naturals. There's a lot of resins in here. So it really gives you that ancient feel ancient Egypt just imagine what it's like sort of walking around a crypt or something but without it smelling of death <laughs> doesn't um, I don't know what a crypt smells like probably doesn't smell of death anymore maybe it did when the bodies were fresh okay we're going off we're going off tangent it just really evokes that ancient feel it's quite potent, it's quite strong. I got a really strong compliment on this one from an Uber driver in Madeira back in 2020. And I will always remember because I'd been eating in a pizza restaurant and I'd had some of the garlic olive oil and it was, you know, when they crushed the garlic up to make it so it was properly garlicky. And I felt so paranoid about how I smell. I think I might have even said, oh, sorry, if I smell of garlic or something. So he said along the lines of that, I smell incredible. Like he, he really liked the perfume. And it is a really unusual perfume. So it's 
going to elicit comments mm. uh, one way or the other, but I think it's it's uh, very, very mysterious. So that's why it's in this list. Now, another one that is dark and mysterious, very, very gothic. And this is a, this is a vintage and it's Dior Poison. This is the Elixir de Parfum. So it's a stronger version than the Eau de Parfum. You can still get poison today in the shops. It's not quite the same. It's still, it's still very much a poison, but the dry down is, is softer, smoother, and much more vanillic. Whereas the vintages are uh, much more bold, shall we say. So this is a tuberose, incense, spice, plum fragrance. There's a ton of notes. I'm not gonna list them. You're never gonna pick all of those notes out. It's ridiculous. But that's to me what this is mostly. Spicy, plummy, incensey, very dark, very gothic. The bottle is perfect to show you what to expect. It looks like a poison apple from a, a, you know, a wicked a stepmom scenario in a fairy tale. And honestly, to me, this smells niche in this day and age, really unique and stand out fragrance. So if, um, if you can pick up a vintage, you're really gonna stand out with this perfume, but it might not necessarily be in a good way. It's gonna be a, quite a polarizing perfume, but very, very dark and gothic. So that's why it's in the list. Now, I think when it comes to dark and gothic fragrances, then leather is a really obvious note, especially if it's quite smoky. So I have gone for The Lover's Tale by Francesca Bianchi here. And this is so rich, so potent. I don't wear it out too much because it is so strong and also really quite unusual. Even Francesca Bianchi says she doesn't wear it herself because it's, I guess, maybe too animalic, too leathery, I'm not sure, but she's, she's not that comfortable wearing it. So, and you know, she can rock anything, that lady. So Lover's Tale is a leathery iris scent. It's powdery and definitely vintage smelling, but fairly animalic, very musky and quite leathery as well. So that is going to really turn heads and it's not going to smell like anything else that anyone else is wearing. And again, very polarizing. Some people were gonna love it and some people are going to hate it. The iris in here is stunning. Francesca Bianchi puts, I think she puts iris in everything and she does such a great job with iris. She manages to make it stick around and she really manages to make it quite a full bodied and yeah, this is a really, really strong fragrance. One spray for me, and I'll, I will just simply use one spray and then dab it all around, and that is more than enough. And I am definitely a mysterious, dark, maybe even dangerous character when I'm wearing the lover's tail. So sticking with leather, I'm not sure if leather is an official note in this one, but I do get leather from it. And it's called Magdala from Tion Reinfeld. So of course it's all natural. It takes me to an ancient ruin, so, but rather than that Egyptian feel that you get from Dendera, and to me it feels like it could be an ancient ruins, uh, maybe a Christian or Catholic or even a religion that existed thousands of years ago that no longer is practiced. Could even be some strange, weird cult but we're talking ancient ruins, earthy, dry, leather. Imagine an altar where maybe sacrifices happened, but where lots of incense has been burned over years and years. So it's earthy, it's a little spicy, it's incensey, it's leathery. Really, really mysterious, deep, contemplative type fragrance. And I think there's a floral in here that's lifting it up. Maybe something like a, a little bit of lily or something. I'm not sure. But 
there's something else that lifts it up as well so it's not really really dark it's not just pure dark so that's Magdala from Tion Weinfeld and the next one we have here is zoologist hummingbird not hummingbird it's nightingale this is probably the most approachable of all of these fragrances hummingbird but i think it's the muskiness that really makes it mysterious it's plummy again like the dior but not so dark this one is plummy and musky. Uh, I need to look the notes up because, uh, here we go. Plum blossom, red rose, violet, oak moss, ambergris, argarwood, white musk, patchouli, labdanum, olibanum, and sandalwood. So it's another one that's musky, woody, powdery, I'd say the plum blossom, it says plum blossom, it smells plummy like plum fruits but the plum blossom is probably the main note in here and then the, I feel like the rose just backs that up but it's very very musky with the, obviously they have ambergris, I don't think they use real ambergris at zoologist, I think they're vegan but the ambergris note adds to the sort of savoury muskiness that is in here and it does smell incensey and resinous and powdery but very much more of an approachable fragrance than everything else in the list but i had to bring it in because it does give me mysterious vibes and i got one more and this one isn't really dark and gothic but it is mysterious this one gives you a mysterious and magical fluffy, elevated, happy kind of feeling. So this is really a contrast to all the others, but I definitely still get mystery from it. And it's Ikirio Drifting. So fragrance by Vincent over at Dreamhouse Ikirio. Fragrance is called Drifting. There's notes of lavender, white mask, peru balsam, and hedione. Hedione, if you don't know, is an aroma chemical that has a very magical, ethereal, slightly jasmine-like scent, but it's not heavy, proper, like jasmine from jasmine, uh, essential oil or absolute. It's a, it's a really light and gentle aroma chemical that is, is beautiful. It's, it's um, what, used widely in perfumery and usually to great effect. I, I definitely am a fan of Hedione. Uh, I don't know that I would necessarily pick it out and I don't think you're really supposed to usually with Hedione but it adds this lovely lightness and it just kind of, I feel like it just pushes the fragrance out. To me this is, the lavender is as if you took lavender and you stripped it of those aspects that make it feel herbal or peppery or astringent if you took lavender and you smoothed it right out and just got rid of all of those elements, that's the lavender I get here. I'm not a big fan of lavender, so it's so strange for me to love, and I do love this, to love a perfume with lavender as the main note. And I think the reason why is because Vincent feels a similar way about lavender. It's not his favorite note and he challenged himself to work with it and this is what he's come up with. So in a way, this is a lavender fragrance for people who don't like lavender. And this is just, it's, it's pure, fluffy, clean musk, slightly sweetened, but not too sweet with this really smooth vanilla, but it feels like magical moon dust. It's just crazy. It feels like fluffy clouds. It's like, it's it's washing on a sunny day uh you know white sheets hanging out in the hanging out <laughs> like actually ha like hung out in a meadow of white flowers it's a white linen floaty dress being worn by a beautiful uh, young young lady <laughs> i think you get the picture it's it's just got but it has that mysterious mysterious magical dust kind of thing and i think it's the kind of fragrance that will pull people towards you it's a very innocent smelling perfume nothing challenging 
very approachable but has this mystery about it and it doesn't really smell like anything else maybe the closest i would say to come to it would be lavande trianon from maison lancome which is now discontinued but this is less intense this is much more fluffy uh, so yeah that is drifting by ikirio and uh, it's, it's very new to me and i absolutely bloody love it that's it then I think, we'll stop there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I'd love it if you would join my little community. That would be nice. See you next time. Bye.